main points of the video on screen right now. Go to that timestamp if you want to skip my rambling, which I don't blame you for. All right. Sometimes I'll just start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope to find it along the way. It's Michael Scott, famous quote from uh, The Office. And incidentally, it kind of uh, resonated with me in a way that I put it in the perspective of video creation. So today I wanted to make a video, right? Didn't really have much of a plan. I have a bunch of plans written up on a sheet of paper that are not going to be this video, obviously. And I don't really feel like doing them. I don't feel like they are good enough. I don't feel like... My, I have any content, right? That's a feeling that probably a lot of people on YouTube at least can relate to. I get stuck in this mode where I don't do anything. I don't record. I just sit there being super anxious about the fact that I should be recording and I'm not. And that is just a negative feedback loop, which basically ends up you being unhappy and there's no content at all. So this video is a bit of a reactional video to a lot of people who I know who are small YouTubers that post the question like, when I'm in a creative rut, when I'm out of ideas, like when there's no stream of inspiration coming to me, what do I do? How do I get ideas, right? There's no simple answer to that question, I'll tell you that much. Writers have been like grappling with that stuff for probably as long as people people have been writing, you know? So there's no clear answer and it's a very individual thing too. But there are some things that I'd like to at least recommend to people. And I don't base these things on my personal experience as much as I base it on people who are better than me at YouTube and who have gone through things that I haven't gone through. The main person that I'm talking about is Weezy Waiter. He had a channel that went pretty much straight up from the beginning and then enjoyed a slow <laughs> decline into what he called the, a slow death of his channel. But he revamped his content and kind of revived it and had some super viral video quite recently at least. And after that, the videos have had a different feel and his views and general community have responded very well to it. So here's what he had to say about it. Number one, have a purpose. It seems simple, or of course have a purpose. Most channels that thrive today have a specific purpose. They have a reason to keep going. And the ones that don't, or have long ago forgotten their purpose, well. Well, you could be saying that you're making videos because it's fun, dude, leave me alone, shut up. That's fine. Fun is a great reason to do things. But if you want to make things for lots of other people to enjoy and possibly make a career out of making things, well, boy, I got the video for you. This one, actually. Rule number two, effectively communicate the purpose with everything you do. When you make sure that you communicate your purpose with everything you do, it helps you creatively. Because whenever you come to a choice, you have a guide. It's your purpose. Just look at your purpose. I'm just gonna shorten his video down to the main points that I resonated with, which is have a purpose for the video. Now this might seemingly completely collide with the next point I'm gonna make, which is just make stuff. You know, just make it. Just start, sit down and start making it. I'm just gonna go into these points a little bit more on their own. So first of all, have a clear purpose and ask yourself, is this video serving this purpose? To be very clear, your purpose doesn't have to be to educate or to spread awareness about anything or, you know, your purpose can be very general, such as to entertain, which is basically what I would say is my purpose. And I should definitely move this mic a little bit. When I say that's my purpose, obviously not in life, but with my content is to entertain. And I think that's the, like the most popular purpose to have on YouTube, just to entertain people. And if your purpose is to blow up or make money, well, you definitely chose the wrong profession for one. And two, that might be a purpose that is a, a little bit too general. If, if you catch my drift. See, the purpose is not supposed to be super specific, but it needs to be specific enough so that when you make a video, you can at least ask yourself, is this serving my purpose? Is this entertaining, according to me? Is this imparting the message that I want to impart to my viewers? Yes, no, maybe? I don't know, can you repeat the question? At least, you know, sit down, take five minutes, write down your purpose and say, well, is this my purpose really? What is my actual purpose, you know? Look at one of the best videos you've made, either if it's in terms of views or in terms of how proud you are of it, and then ask yourself, what's the purpose of this video? Did this video impart the purpose better than other videos? Probably it might have, I don't know. But it's a good exercise anyways, right? Keep asking yourself, why am I making content? Why am I making this? Why is that cut there? Why is this meme here? Is it entertaining at all? Or am I doing it just because, you know, people, other people are doing it, right? The second topic that I wanted to discuss a little bit sort of uh, ties in well with a question that I see a lot. And a question, even if you don't ask it, you've probably felt it or thought it, is how do I get inspiration? There is a great video by storytellers, which is titled, How to be creative. 
how an artist turns pro. And the main message of that video, I'm just gonna cook it down to a few lines for you, is just sit down and start writing. The biggest problem is sitting down to write. That's the actual obstacle. And that's obviously talking about writing, not making videos, but just sit down and start editing or sit down and start recording. Doesn't really matter at the point of sitting down what you're thinking, because what, as he says, or as somebody else who, who he quoted, Stephen Pressfield, I think. As Pressfield states, the professional knows that the mundane physical act of sitting down and starting to work sets in motion a mysterious process that produces inspiration. The amateur waits for inspiration. The professional knows that it will come after he starts. He makes the distinction that professionals know that the very mundane act of just going to work sets in motion a, a process that makes you inspired or your inspiration doesn't come from anything else than doing the work. Just sitting down and looking at the page and writing. You might write terrible stuff. You might make a terrible video or start to make a terrible video, but during that process, you're gonna think, well, why is this terrible? Well, it's terrible because of this. I should have done that instead. And boom, that's your idea. Now you have a better idea and restart the process all over again until you have a great idea or a you know, at least a project that is acceptable. Not everything has to be great. It's YouTube, it's free. As long as it serves your purpose to some extent, that's fine. Seemingly, these two kind of collide in a way, right? You can sit down and do whatever. Well, you're not really thinking about your purpose at that point, are you? No, you don't have to be. Because when you get a good idea, if you get a good idea or a better idea, that's when you start asking yourself, okay, so how can I tie this in to my purpose? How can I make this inter entertaining? How can I make this little talk right here entertaining but this video if anything is probably not serving my purpose as well as it could have been which is why to me this is a bit of a throwaway video just to get something out there which is okay because that's how professionals do it imagine an actor nobody aspires to be in the movie sharknado probably bad example because that movie is actually kind of funny nobody aspires to be in like a live remake of a sonic movie right doesn't really matter work is work and as long as you're putting yourself out there, that's a good thing. Most of the time. Don't make racist stuff or sexist stuff. Kind of stay clear of that, maybe. I, I feel like that should be, shouldn't have to be said. To cap this little video off, I'd like just like to tell you that the links to these videos, which I do recommend you watch in full, are down below. If you think my interpretation of them is bad, you know, tell me about it. I want to know. Critique is always good. And if you're actually interested in this kind of stuff, I would suggest you follow Storyteller and or uh, Weezy Waiter instead of me. Because as I said, this is not my regular content. My regular content is not this. So, you know, <laughs> I'm going against my own advice, but hey, that's okay.